looking at controlling resources. Okay, then just as an introduction, um, your contractor site manager has probably one of the toughest jobs uh, because you can think of what he needs to manage. He needs to manage uh, procurement, uh, pro the program, the people, maybe uh, like a marriage counselor to some people. You have quite a diverse job description. On site, you have to manage your materials, uh, progress, uh, quality, etc., health and safety, and all that. Armed with the contract document, a program, and a health and safety plan, he has to manage the site. Um, his goals are or is to manage time, budget, quality, and zero accidents. Um, he has also has to control project resources, and he has to consider labor, materials, plants, subcontractors, and preliminaries. Um, labor we're going to look at uh, can either be directly employed of subcontractors. Um, materials he has to control the waste of it. For the rest, refer to your study notes. Um, we will only focus on the waste management uh, contained in chapter 8. So this is uh, this little thing which I said which crept in. So please just ignore uh, that. Uh, yesterday when I updated the, the notes, I saw that this was in. So that that's just something that crept in. Okay. So, um, labor control. You, uh, like I said, you can either have directly uh, employed labor or you can have self-employed labor. In South Africa, it's not really um, self-employed labor. I think we've got a different term. Uh, we usually use um, labor-only contractors, um, guys that specialize in labor, which has the necessary insurance, they have their medicals updated, um, UIF and all those items they look uh, look at because you can imagine if you've got uh, one or two projects and you suddenly have a hundred people that you need to appoint and then what do you do with them once the project is done so that's where the labor only comes in but your directly employed labor is usually the contractor um, like um, contractors like shop fitters and so on they have specialized guys that do the work uh, for them. Uh, for instance, now that tender briefing that we went to, um, they um, like, for instance, stylers, plasterers, um, many of the contractors will have that type of core staff on it, on their list, the, the artisans and then and bricklayers or so. And what they might do is they might get a couple of casuals or people f um, for that specific project to assist those artis artisans, um, guys that carry the bricks up to to them or so. Or so. And then uh, it depends on the size of the contractor as well some and the location. Um, for instance, if you're a contractor in Joburg and you get appointed here in Bloemfontein, you might appoint a bricklayer from Bloemfontein here just for the project. Uh, or a labor only con uh, contract for that or the other option is to bring that person from there but then you need to organize lodging and so forth whereas if you appoint someone here he's already have he already lives in the vicinity so that's the type of considerations that you need to think of okay and then uh, large contractors may also have their own specialized workforce a large project your labor expenditure is crucial and invo involves actual man weeks uh, more on this later. Uh, the man weeks we're not going to look in at in too much depth. That's usually um, a, a specialized um, method of managing uh, your labor on site uh, and depending on where you, you're going to end up. But if you're going to uh, get appointed by a large con uh, contractor, this is probably what you're going to manage as a construction manager quite a lot is to manage your people and time so um, please note that okay then self-employed labor uh, we uh, in the book as the UK do not use the term uh, anymore and have moved to labor-based contractors like I said earlier okay so resource histograms so that this you uh, did in PTM so I'm not going to go into too much depth 
uh, of uh, how your labor histograms work. Um, but what I what I may ask you guys to do for me, uh, there's an example in this uh, chat in this book that I might um, uh, post a, a mini task for you guys to do. Um, but don't worry, I won't do it now. Uh, I'll just check with you guys when when you have a bit of time. When when's your last tasks and tests due? Well, it's the next talk, and I'm going to talk about those tasks. Now it's clear. Okay. And then exams and literature review and the TSS. Well, what we can do then next week, uh, what we'll probably do, instead of having a formal class, what we'll do is we'll just do a tutorial on this um, on this topic. Uh, because I probably won't ask this in a test or so, but I want, want us to cover it at least. So what we'll do is a tutorial which will count as an informal assessment. Then we'll come to class and we'll work through uh, an example. I think that uh, this example specifically okay, yeah mm. so yeah it's not really a test it's more like a workshop okay I think that's going to be the easiest way of assess doing this assessment okay okay but histograms do you guys know what a histogram is okay so um, I'll show you guys now you you will probably recognize the next few slides um, it is all about resource availability a resource histogram is a nice visual presentation of the labor demand. The main objective is to show uh, the peak demands. Okay, you can use multiple uh, programs for this, uh, computer programs, etc. Um, and in the winter school, we're actually going to uh, do. I don't know if we're going to get to resource management. I think we're only going to get to resource allocation in Microsoft projects. Okay, when the uh, critical items have been identified, remedial actions has, have to be taken, e.g. Uh, appointing more people, getting more machinery, uh, or just elong um, uh, letting the project run for longer. So that type of options that you do have. Okay, so this one you'll probably recognize. This is from PTM from third year. I don't know if it looks familiar. It's a very simple um, uh, yeah, histogram. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, it's it's a simple project where you have excavations, bedding, pipe, laid pipes, manual excavations, manual construction, install valves, backfill, test and commissioning. So it's a very simple little project. Um, but this is now your labor only histogram. Okay, so <clears throat> you have, um, you need two laborers that in your teams that you can put <coughs> on for for trench excavation. So you've, you've got two people that can work simultaneously at once in the trench. Your bidding, you've, you, you can put in four people to work on that and it takes them about uh, one day. And then you've got your manual excavations. Um, you need about this amount of people uh, laying of pipes. You, you need three people to do that. And then you've got your manual um, construction where you need six people um, and so forth. OK, so and then you can see that um, all it does is this is done on an Excel spreadsheet and then you just add up the amount of people that you need per day. So the total uh, amount of uh, labor for day one is two. The reason for this being so low is because you've got a TLB as well, which is working, which is digging the trenches. So you don't need a lot of laborers. You can only really use two people to maybe clean the way, uh, the excavation, and um, maybe one operator or so. Um, so that's where the rationale comes in. And then for your bedding, that is now for pu uh, putting it back into uh, in the trenches there you can actually use four people you still need one TLB but it goes quick it's just a backfill and then you you've got compaction so you need a BOMAC and you've and you need your um, TLB but there you've got two items going you've got your bedding going and you've got your manual excavations also running at the same time 
So it's very simple. So you just list, you take your gang charts uh, according to your planned um, amount of work, and then you just allocate resources to that in your Excel spreadsheet, and per day you add it up. So you can see on day one I need two laborers. Day uh, up to day five it is, yeah. You need two laborers each day, and then on day uh, six you need six laborers, and so forth. And then you can see uh, on day 11 and 12 you actually need seven or ten laborers okay so but now okay so on your um, labor histogram you can see um, we've got these two extremities here but we know we only have eight laborers available so uh, there's already two uh, many laborers on that on that day so you can see you need to do a resource leveling there okay then with regard to the um, TLB, um, the same applies, you, you add it up and you can see on which days you need what amount of, um, of machinery and you can see on day 8 you actually need two um, TLBs but you only have one available. Okay, So you can easily do a resource or identify where you don't have enough resources. Okay, and then the simple solution is um, they, um, without going into too, mu too much depth, is um, you just level out your uh, resources and your TLBs. And what it causes, it causes your project to go, uh, I think it's item, the pipe laying that just moves out one, one day and together with your excavations, which moves the project uh, to one day if you level it to one and if you level your um, pro of your laborers to um, to eight like there okay I uh, just want to see why it's still adding that up okay so um, yeah so that's just a bit of a recap of how histograms work and Going further in materials control, that is on page 401. Okay, it depends on the size of the uh, organization how materials are managed, whether you've got a buyer, central buying um, division, or if some one person does everything. Uh, good communications are needed between buyers and site personnel, that's very crucial. And then the responsibilities have to be clear have to be clearly defined. Once on site, it's, it's the responsibility of the construction manager to coordinate the communication. So um, that's something important to to note. And then site layout planning is crucial. That's how uh, where you're going to put your plant, is uh, where you're going to store your materials. And uh, I think it's one of my next slides. There's a couple of things that you can immediately if your housekeeping on site is done well, if you come onto your site and you see, but everything is nice and neat, you know, there's, they're managing their materials well. If you come onto site and you, you're falling over debris and um, bricks, uh, broken bricks and so on, you know, but they're not managing their materials very well. Okay, excessive waste uh, left under uh, scaffolding. Oh, the, Yes, actually the items which you can see. This is just a few examples. What you can see is excessive waste under a uh, scaffold, uh, face brick bulldozed under ground, material being stored on uneven ground, pallets of bricks and unloaded or unprepared ground. Um, this is supposed to be on. Okay, and then damage of materials by unpacking the packs. Roof trusses stacked on unprepared surfaces, <clears throat> lack of covering of material, excessive material, out of sequence work, not preparing properly. So you can easily see when a site is not properly run, especially towards uh, managing of materials. Okay, then um, something which embroids on that is waste. Historical material waste was only a percentage on top of your rates uh, but these days those percentages if you're working on large projects that, that percentage can 
be a lot of money in your pocket or a lot of money uh, lost so it is something that you need to manage very well new thinking should just seeing it as a resource the industry can benefit environmentally on performance and the bottom line demolitions amount to about 100 million tons per year that's now in the uk so it's quite a lot and then waste removal accounts for 4.5 percent of the company's uh, profit so just to put it into perspective 4.5 percent uh, is quite a lot if you're working on a um, on a, um, a million rands worth of project um, that's more or less 45,000 rand which you could have saved or put in into your pocket so um, yeah it does it's got a lot of money then approximately 13% of all material delivered to site is wasted that's quite a staggering amount and that's just the waste of material there's other items which you can manage well as well it's like your site offices if you manage your tools and sheds and so on efficiently the less um, containers you have on site the less your overheads per day so that's the stuff that you can uh, think about the other things is if you've got if you plan your site such that you um, use some of the original um, your constructed building to use to be used as storage you can save that cost as well so um, there's a whole lot of practical items that you can think of uh, of how to save money by utilizing your progress on site and just not um, just being effective okay duty of care is uh, the construction and demolition waste streams have been uh, prioritized in the by the environmental agency so um, it's basically once you've demolished something you need to get it off site you need to plan for it that's the short and long of it you can't just demolish something and not have a plan of how to uh, clean your site waste streams should be managed safely and without risk to human health okay and then the um, the waste consists uh, may consist of um, metals asphalt stars concrete brick tiles etc okay and there's actually money to be made out of some of these dem demolitions sometimes you can sell your um, hard um, or your or some of your uh, I can't remember what's it in English now but some of your demolitions you can use for fill in other areas if you've got a um, contractor that has a lot of fill to do and you can use those that demolition work there then you can actually sell it to them so uh, remember that don't just pay money and go and dump it at the next nearest site you can actually say or make money from from that like for instance your tar waste you can reuse for other applications also I know in Kuruman they use tar um, sections uh, because of the um, asbestos there on some of the uh, gravel roads they just use some of the uh, excess bitumen and they actually um, made a little layer on some of those areas to rehabilitate it that the dust doesn't uh, fly up so that was one of the um, items that you can use that for for instance okay duty of care uh, construction and demolition waste is normally classified as commercial or industrial waste as as it is waste uh, which requires pre uh, consignment is for instance your asbestos chemicals oils contaminate contaminated soils and so on I've worked on one project where we had to take off asbestos it's a schlep there's only like four contractors in the country that does it so it um, it's a highly specialized work or uh, job and they usually ask a lot of money for it so as soon as if you're doing the pricing on a project and you see this see there's a base asbestos um, or immediately start asking questions is there enough money allowed for identify it as a risk uh, whenever you pricing your documents or so okay then we have a legal uh, duty of care if we know that we're going to work with asbestos the other risk is your laborers exposing it, them to to that if 
Um, it might might not be that your personnel picks up some, uh, a little strand of asbestos on that specific site, but five years down the line he gets uh, asbestosis and he says, oh, on this project I worked on, on that project, that's probably where I got it, even though it might be that he got it from somewhere else. Um, so just see that in that light. So you've got a um, duty to care <coughs> of care to actually look after your personnel's health. Okay, then the principal contractor should ensure that waste is properly cared for whilst on site, waste is passed on to an authorized uh, body, waste transfer uh, note to, ma um, to be made out when waste is handed over. Uh, all reasonable steps are taken to prevent unauthorized handling. Okay, site management plan. Okay, here's a nice example that you guys can use. It's description of the works, contractor, identified person in charge, type of waste that is produced, waste management action uh, proposed. So, pretty straightforward uh, that you guys can have a look at. Okay, a waste hierarchy. So, you guys can also look, just look at waste can either be reduced, reused, recycled, energy recovered or disposal okay so that's also a nice little uh, question to to ask on waste and obviously you need to uh, explain what each one is okay here's another example of a waste uh, data sheet that you guys can make a mental note for for the industry if you do get a uh, do get onto the site and you for some other reason now you have to have an environmental management plan copy and paste this into that okay okay then site waste management strategy uh, this is also uh, nice to have you guys uh, I'm not gonna go into this too much um, you guys can read this. This is also important for for the industry more than really for this for the subject. Mm. If I do uh, change my mind and do include it somewhere, I'll let you guys know definitely on it. But for me at this stage. Uh, you can read through through that, but it it is a nice uh, su uh, summation of the waste management section. So it's basically a summary of what we've done now. So, but I want there's a few couple of stuff uh, that you guys, yeah, it's not too important for me. Okay, then improving your uh, management of, of waste, managers have to be proactive in planning and managing materials, ordering, delivery, handling, and storage of it. Waste is caused by design waste, takeoff, specification waste, delivery waste, site waste. Waste management should be integrated with everyday thinking. Uh, it will have a positive impact on the contractor's profit margin. Materials have to be managed properly in sense uh, incentives to managers have to be um, put into place and then company materials management policies etc it will prevent health and safety problems as well as well okay then we get to subcontractors okay and this is uh, now very important for me uh, as you you've got subcontractors you've got pre subcontractor planning and then you've got during construction uh, contract uh, planning. So uh, figure 18.8 .8 is important. It, it shows the relationship between um, your planning and your actual control on site. So firstly, uh, you need, to, you, if you think back to our tender briefing next week or last week, Friday, uh, we've got a, uh, those guys will have to obtain quotes now from from the suppliers so they at this stage and then they need to compile the shortlist subcontractors register subcontractor selection criteria obtain quotations if it's a large company uh, usually those guys have to be on their vendor lists 
So <coughs> if it's something specialized, then they've got a whole lot of red tape to actually get quotes from other guys and get them onto their registers and stuff. Um, so I'm quite confused that I can only ask for the same answer. Yeah, but yeah, I'll have to break me a solid die, Owens. But uh, I think it was in chapter one or chapter two that we spoke about a, a large company may have something like 5,000 vendors on their list. So that's uh, it's quite a lot of vendors that they do have. What's a vendor? A vendor is like, for instance, Volgo's market. Or buco or um, suppliers, suppliers of concrete, okay. your materials basically. So, yeah, so it depends on where they have worked before. Um, why they you uh, would the advantage of that is, uh, and I think I spoke about that um, previously is if they've got um, guys that they buy from a lot then they usually get discount. So that's that's the major advantage of that. Yeah. Because they buy in bulk, not for just this project, for multiple projects. Okay, then um, then they may, so they get all their quotes, obtain quotes, then they make a decision on who they're gonna use. Uh, and then they use that information and they um, put on their markup on, on that. And then they put that amount into their bill of quantities that they tender on. So they submit their tender, and then the tender evaluation uh, is done. And then if they get awarded, they go. It goes over to they place the subcontractor's orders, and then they agree on a contract program, and then they commence with the project. Okay. So it's very similar. Uh, um, the same way as the main contractor go, the same motions that the main contractor goes through, the subcontractors go through. Yeah. So instead of submitting tenders, if it's a large tender, then uh, though the main contractor will have tenders actually going out to their subcontractors. Yeah. But if it's um, the smaller, the medium-sized contracts, it's they get quotes for certain things to do. Um, yeah, it's like a um, selective. It's the uh, the contractor selects the right uh, their own contractor. <coughs> okay, then just the uh, program, the input uh, subcontractors during construction. Uh, we've got the contract stage that's now finished. So then you've got monthly planning, weekly planning, and then you've got uh, progress reporting. So you can see it's very similar to your normal the same way as what the professional team sits with the main contractor the main contractor sits with the subcontractors okay so um, this is also very important the uh, information contained in here you will see in your um, in your books there's a whole lot of checklists yes. those checklists just read through that, through that. Um, but the main the most important items is actually contained in these figures so um, Again, going back to my rule of thumb is know the headings and then you can just hold on to, uh, to that. Uh, in Afrikaans is uh, can you upskrift the horol Yeah, so. But the main thing is if you need to horol, you need to understand. Yeah. Okay, subcontractors uh, continued. Um, these days, subcontractors may be responsible for their own program, and they are. For instance, Amelia, where we worked on, and uh, the plumbing contractors had to submit their own program, and that had to slot in underneath the main contractor's uh, program. Uh, it's Okay, then it's a good idea to keep stock of the price, quality, and workmanship standards and cooperation of your time program performance of uh, subcontractors and uh, I've seen guys if they've got like vendors and subcontractors uh, if, uh, they actually have a scorecard on on them and then the, uh, and a rating to them so the guys can move up and down and that's usually very confidential that information what the guys use um, 
uh, it does in in large companies that that's very crucial information because um, if you're working on large projects and you have to evaluate a lot of subcontractors then the guys usually you look at um, the ratings uh, for this guy in this area and so on so it does become quite complex okay and then just an example this is um, I think we've touched on this this is not that important for me but um, work package master program package stage program and then you've got a work package to four over six week program so it's just going into more detail so it's not too important for me okay then subcontractors liaison meetings okay so you've got your program monthly progress meetings <clears throat> two weekly short-term planning meetings one weekly uh, meeting and then you pl daily planning so you can see your monthly site meetings to coincide with main contractor meetings with architect um, purpose to review progress overview variations basically looking reporting to the management and then your two weekly uh, meetings this is more on technical items short-term planning implementation on one or two week cycles okay, and then the purpose is to resources in the in the short term period review and monitor progress liaison with other trades progress reporting at weekly intervals etc what's liaison in afrikaans uh correspondency what does it mean what's what's in what's liaison the yeah it's basically working together it's oh. if you liaise with someone you oh. you speak to them you communicate and you yeah. do stuff together Okay, then the last one is uh, the short-term program. Just another example of that. That's also not too uh, too important. Um, we're gonna do programming later on. Next semester, we're gonna do programming in detail. So then we're gonna cover all all these areas. Okay, and that's it. Thank you.